Long ago, the Great Spirit came and gathered all the peoples of this earth and said, I'm going to send you to four directions, and over time, I'm going to change you to four colors. But I'm going to give you some teachings that you will call these the original teachings. And when you come back together with each other, you will share these so that you can live and have peace on earth and a great civilization will come about. What the medicine wheel shows is a circle with a cross in the middle. What this represents most basically is the four directions, east, north, west, and south. And what this symbolism shows is that although the directions may be opposite to each other, represented by the cross, they are still connected, and this is shown by the circle connecting the ends of the cross. There are other interpretations that include up to the sky and down to the earth as the fifth and sixth directions. Also, some people look to the center of the circle as being within, and this is the seventh direction. For now, I will just be referring to the four directions and the symbols that are used within those directions. As you can see, colors are also used. There is yellow, white, black, and red. And this symbolizes the different races of people in the world. Yellow being people from Asia, white being people from Europe, black being people from Africa, and red being people from this continent. Sometimes people ask, well, where's brown for the Latino groups? But actually, they are represented here because the red and the white, the indigenous people here and the Spaniards, blended together to form the Latino groups. In an ideal world, all of the colors would be able to overlap with each other, but unfortunately, there are many interracial conflicts. Within the four directions, we look at gifts coming to us from the four directions. In the traditional Lakota way, it is believed that everything in nature is sacred and was sent to us as a gift from the Great Spirit, Wakantanka. Here are some examples of the gifts given to us from the four directions. In addition to the colors, yellow, white, black, and red, there are also basic elements, fire, air, earth, and water. Fire is a gift from the east, along with the sun. Air is a gift from the north, along with the animals. Earth is a gift from the west, along with the minerals. And water is a gift from the south, along with the plants. And if you think about these gifts from the perspective of the Great Plains, these directions make a lot of sense. For example, the sun rises in the east, and it is yellow, like fire. White is from the north, where the snow comes from, along with the northern winds. The sun sets in the west, so it is black. Also, the black hills, or black earth, and the Rocky Mountains are the, to the west of the plains. Minerals are also a gift from the west. And if you think of black hills gold, these gifts make a lot of sense. And to the south, Red can be thought of as the people and the deserts to the south. And water and plants can be thought of as representing the rainforests in Mexico and South America. The medicine wheel shows that even though they are in opposite directions, destroying the rainforests to the south can affect the air to the north because the gifts are all connected by the circle. The most basic part of medicine in the medicine wheel is symbolizing what a person is. To the east, there is the spiritual aspect. To the north, there is the mental aspect. To the west, there is the physical aspect. And to the south, the emotional aspect. One problem I think we have in modern medicine is that people don't see themselves as being at the center of the wheel and being in charge of all four aspects. Many people think that the priest or clergy 
is in charge of their spirituality, their teachers or psychiatrists are in charge of their mental health, the doctor or physician is in charge of their physical health, and their friends and relationships are in charge of their emotional well-being. In this way, people have an external locus of control because they are not in control of all four aspects. Whereas in the traditional Lakota way, the person is seen as being at the center of the wheel and being in charge of their own spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional health. In this way, there is an internal locus of control. Also in the traditional Lakota way, illness is seen as being an imbalance in this wheel. And what the traditional healers do is help people get back into balance through prayer, meditation, herbal medicine, and getting in touch with emotions. A difference between modern medicine and traditional medicine is that the person takes an active role in their own healing process by working with the medicine man. Whereas in modern medicine, many people believe it is the doctor's responsibility to make them well, and they take on a more passive role in the healing process. This attitude often manifests itself as anger or frustration when people cannot find a quick fix to a physical ailment. Another difference between modern medicine and traditional Lakota medicine is that the traditional healers have to be very dynamic because they attend to all four of these aspects in order to help people get back into balance. Whereas in modern medicine, the doctors primarily attend to the physical aspect of health. Another word for modern doctor is physician, which has the same root as physical, which is from the Latin physic, meaning the natural sciences. I think most of us understand how all four aspects are related to our health and well-being. For example, most people believe that mental stress can cause physical illness and physical illness can cause emotional depression. And when people are searching for the meaning of life spiritually, they can feel out of balance in any of these areas. Also, people have a natural tendency to try to get themselves back into balance, even if they are unaware of this symbolism. For example, when people are physically ill and in the hospital, they tend to become more spiritual. This is one reason why there are chapels in most hospitals. Also, when people are emotionally upset, one response is to rationalize, to get back into balance. Another example of our understanding of this symbolism is within athletics. Coaches often refer to pride and team unity as being the values that make up team spirit. And from team spirit, people develop mental strength and mental toughness which influences the physical performance and many athletes believe that the most important part of their physical performance lies within mental strength it is also a common saying that games are won on emotion and what this means is that the physical performance produces an emotion which feeds back into the team spirit or pride in this way it can be seen how winning breeds winning through the emotional, spiritual, and mental aspects. I believe that one reason why sports are popular, particularly among men, is that this is one area in modern society that allows men to be openly emotional. Another way to look at the medicine wheel is mind, body, heart, and soul. The spiritual nature can be called the spirit or the soul, mental nature is the mind, physical nature is the body, and for emotions we use heart as the symbol for emotions. For example, when you feel for someone, your heart goes out to them, or when you feel bad, your heart is broken. This is very similar to Plato's philosophy. He referred to a soul, mind, and body. But in the medicine wheel, emotions are seen as a separate entity, making it a circular symbolism. Plato saw emotions as being part of the mind, making it a linear model. The medicine wheel can also be thought of as representing values, decisions, actions, and reactions. 
What a person does from the spiritual realm is interpret their values into decisions, which is the mental aspect. And then they implement their decisions into actions, which is the physical aspect. And the actions produce a feeling, whether it is a positive feeling or guilt, depending on the action, they get reactions, which is the emotional aspect. And the emotions provide feedback or input back into the value system. So it is a circular pattern. In this way, it can be seen how everything we do, all of our decisions, actions, and emotions, are rooted within spirituality. This is one reason why the elders tell us that everything in life is sacred and everything we do is spiritual. Within the medicine wheel, it is easy to see how there can be imbalances in the spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional aspects. A person who is imbalanced toward the mental nature and away from emotions might be characterized as cold and non-emotional. In modern society, a lot of men are imbalanced in this way because they believe that to be a man is to be non-emotional. But to be missing the emotional development is to be missing the important feedback link into the value system. If this is completely undeveloped, the person might be characterized as heartless or impassionate because there is no mechanism for guilt or joy to feedback to the value system for re-evaluation. Someone who is imbalanced toward emotions and away from the mental aspect might be characterized as irrational or overly emotional. In this way, the emotions are controlling the person's decisions and actions. This can manifest itself as impulsiveness or poor decision making. A person can also be imbalanced toward spirituality and away from the physical aspect. In many religions, it is a sacred thing to be a martyr with your body. But in some instances, it is conceivable to see how a person who is imbalanced toward spirituality may actually be running away from his or her physical nature. Being imbalanced toward the physical nature and away from spirituality is something I think is common among people today. These people believe that the only things that are real exist only in the physical world. And they believe that thoughts and emotions are rooted in physical nature. These are the type of people who say things like, I need to find myself, when they realize there is something missing in their lives. What I've been talking about so far are values, decisions, actions, and reactions. But there are also interactions. Problems arise in interpersonal relationships when people are out of balance. This diagram represents two people who come together who are imbalanced. The person on top is someone who is imbalanced toward the mental side and away from emotions. And the person on the bottom is someone who is imbalanced toward the emotional side. The old saying, opposites attract, is actually true in many cases. I'm sure many of us can think of examples of relationships in which one person is very rational and non-emotional, and the other person is very emotional and seemingly irrational. What happens in this situation is people see in each other what they don't have in themselves, and by getting together, they kind of complete each other's circles. These people can interact in the physical and spiritual realms, but when the person on top wants to be rational, there is conflict because the person on the bottom has to operate outside of their circle. And the opposite is also true. When the person on bottom wants to be emotional, there is conflict because the person on top has to operate outside his or her circle. The reason there is conflict is because they are constantly trying to pull each other outside of their comfort zones. Oftentimes, these people will remain together because even though there is a lot of conflict, each person provides for the other the aspects of life that are not developed within themselves. In an ideal situation, both people will develop their wheels fully before trying to start a relationship or a marriage. In this way, 
they can interact equally on all four levels and provide each other balance through harmony rather than conflict. When you look at interactions, you can look at people interacting like this. This is an example of a superficial interaction. People can interact superficially within any of the four aspects. An example of this might be in an academic or a professional environment where people are interacting, but what they are really doing is projecting themselves. If you recall, the people are at the center of the wheel and they are projecting themselves into one realm or another. It's almost as if people have an arm's distance projection of who they are and they hold up a mask. And people wear different masks in different situations depending on who they are interacting with. What happens when people are interacting with loved ones or family members is that the interaction becomes like this and they are interacting at the center of who they are. This is an example of a true interaction because it is at the center of the wheel and the people are free to interact on all four levels. Whereas in a superficial interaction, it is the projection of one person meeting the projection of the other.